Hello, last month we reported on ABS official all-cause mortality data at 16.6%. The latest data is just out and we're here today to give you an update on that. As we thought, as we suspected, the trend line was heading north. We'll go to the international data after we look at the Australian information. And if you think this is important information, important data to get out, to share, please do so. We invite you to subscribe and to share this with other people because this is an emerging story, not just in Australia, but also globally. Okay, now to look at the Australian data. Figures just released by the ABS for all-cause mortality is just over 17, 17.1%. All-cause mortality means deaths from any causes, whether it's diabetes, heart, kidney, car accident, whatever, all-cause mortality. It's a total number. Now keep in mind that normally this would move in a fairly modest range year to year. But here we are with a staggering figure and it's trending north. Okay, there are three points to keep in mind when you look at this data. First of all, this is 2022 data, calendar year, and this is after the pandemic year of 21. So you would have thought with the pandemic impacts last year that 2022 would recover a little bit and the figures, mortality figures would go down, but they haven't, they're going up. The second thing to keep in mind is that we are lagging behind the US and UK because of what went on globally. So there's a little bit of a lag effect here for Australia and yet, again, the figures are going up. Another point to keep in mind is that this does not include, does not include miscarriages, which globally are showing an increase. And there's another interesting observation to make within this data, and it's not just in Australia, but it's also globally, as we'll see in a moment. In the age ranges of 15 to 44, we are seeing a significant increase in mortality. Now they're the premium primary ages, 25 to 44, 15 to 44, of people who are relatively fit, active, growing their uh, businesses, building their careers, traveling, exploring, having families, and yet they are starting to show signs of increasing mortality. This is an aberration, this is not normal, and it is happening, as I say, in Australia, but also in other countries such as the UK and in the US. And all, in fact, right across Europe. So we'll, we'll, we'll dig into that in a moment, so stay with me. And the final point to keep in mind is that this is compared to a four-year average benchmark. Four years with one of the lower years removed. So if that lower year had not been removed, this comparison would be even more dramatic than it is. So we've got a lag effect, we've got a benchmark with four years, with no miscarriages, and we've got this trending line which is showing that we are in for a very interesting ride. Now let's take a quick look at what's going on globally because it'll give us some context and some further point of comparison. Australia is a little bit behind Europe and the US in terms of the impacts of the pandemic, as we say, but also the response, the medical response. So what are we seeing in the US? Let's take a look here at this interview between Ed Dowd and thought leaders. Now, Ed Dowd is a former Wall Street analyst, so he's analytical in his uh, approach. He's got an economic and financial background. And he's teamed up with a couple of really high-end analysts to dive deeply into the data to try and discover what's going on because this has got major ramifications for, for, for uh, economies and nations. And he refers to this, as you'll see, as something similar to a war. He refers to it as a war because you wouldn't expect to see these levels of mortality in peace times. And in the US, in some areas, in the Northeast in particular, they've had up to 40%. Now this is scaring insurance companies, not surprisingly, but also scaring and impacting on the medical system. So take a look at this interview with thought leaders because he refers to it as a war zone and is trying to explain to people what's going on. In the second half of 2021, all-cause mortality among especially working age members had rose to a stunning 40%. And just to put some frame around that, um, a 10% increase in excess mortality for this working age group would be a once in a 200 year flood. 40% uh, was just off the charts. 
a 40% increase from that. That's why you're calling it a war. To fast forward a little bit, Josh uh, started to look at CDC data. And the CDC data, as presented on their website, was lumped all ages. And so what he was able to do was take the data, download it, and they did provide ages of the, of the deaths. So he was able to um, create age cohorts. Uh, the age cohort uh, from 25 to 44, which we call the millennials, uh, experienced an 84% uh, rise of excess mortality into the fall of 2021, August, September, October. And the rate of change was just dramatic. So they were running around 40, 50% in the summer, and then this parabolic spike move up into the fall. Um, and it then tailed off and, and settled back down. But, you know, 84% rise in excess mortality for that age cohort represented about 61,000 Americans who perished from March of 21 to February of 2022. And 61,000 deaths is the, is the same as uh, the Vietnam War casualties we, we experienced over 10 years where 58,000 Americans died. In the UK, the Office of National Statistics has just presented and is showing cardiovascular as a number one killer. And people who have got a fairly conservative position on this cannot explain this sudden increase in cardiovascular events as a cause of death. They don't know what the reason is. In Australia, one of the journalists recently said it was COVID complications, so that was her best grab. The unknown cause effect which we talked about last time is also being put forward. So COVID complications, unknown causes, but here is some data from ONS with cardiovascular. And across Europe, we have month to month data coming through for what they call excess mortality. It's a little bit of a different expression, but more or less the same thing. They average out the benchmark like we do in Australia and they present their data. You can see here the different nations tracking it month to month. And what we have for Spain at the moment is 36.9% in excess mortality. In Italy, 24.9%. And in Ireland, 16.3%. Overall, Europe is just over 15.5%, but also tracking north. So the same trend lines are emerging there the same causes of death, cardiovascular, and the same evidence of miscarriage and other kind of complications that we've been talking about. So this is not just an Australian uh, aberration, this, this, this mortality rate increasing, this is global. So we have a global presentation of mortality increasing almost on a month by month basis. It does level off in some nations, but overall it is increasing and it is significantly above the norm, hence the excess mortality description. The impacts on the health system, the impacts on community are immense. We'll talk about that in a moment. So there are many people dying, maybe someone you know, maybe someone next door or someone that you've seen on television. There are sports stars dying, celebrities. There's a 42-year-old politician who's recently died. Or there's Rory Nairn in New Zealand, a 26-year-old plumber who had his whole life ahead of him and died. The coroner has just ruled that that death is attributed directly to the COVID injection. And here's another 26 year old, this time in Australia. The community is rallying around local AMA boss Michelle Atchison after the sudden death of her daughter Kaylin. Hundreds have taken to social media to express their condolences and pay tribute to the 26 year old who Dr Atchison says never woke up. The AMA president announced the sad news on Twitter, describing her daughter's death as utterly unexpected. kaylin has been described by friends as compassionate, caring and beautifully generous. Her cause of death is not known. Well, this Canadian doctor who went on a three-day cycle ride, very fit, very active and died. But he's not alone. In fact, he's one of 30 plus Canadian doctors, frontline workers, who having given their service in 2021, in 2022, are dying. He's one of 30 plus, as I say, and the average age of these doctors who are dying is 48 years. That's a tremendous loss of skills 
of, of medical and clinical skills, a tremendous loss of life years, and an impact on Canada and the health system, obviously, not to mention the tragic loss of their families. Over 30 doctors. Okay, let's look at other health impacts here in Australia, because the health systems here in a number of states are buckling under the pressure. Let's start with ambulance ramping. The issue of ambulance ramping. It's bad in South Australia, but they are not alone. Also a big issue in New South Wales and in Victoria, a recent report showed 33 people have died waiting. So to conclude this report, let's look at the trends, the impacts and the after effects. We'll start with trends. The first trend that's clearly presenting in the US, Europe and now Australia is cardiovascular is the number one killer. Cardiovascular events is presenting as the number one killer. It's always been a threat, it's always been a, a major reason for fatality, but it's becoming the dominant killer. The second uh, trend that we can observe is this uh, impact on younger age groups, 15 to 44. Now these are the people, as I said before, are healthy, and yet they are the ones that are showing a sharp increase in, in, in mortality. And the final point, to observe is the dropping fertility in terms of a trend. So these are the things to watch over time. With regard to impacts, obviously there's an impact coming on economies, labour supply, but also on communities. We talked about that last time. And the after effects, the shock after effects, if you like, is the erosion of trust in government and our leaders, the erosion and the damage in trust in the medical profession and the after effects in terms of community and relationships and families. This is incredibly significant. If you consider that the figures are normally quite modest, as we said at the beginning, two, three percent perhaps, to be at this level, this is going to have significant after effects as we track forward. And with each month, we could anticipate a more revealing picture to emerge as we are seeing now in Europe and we are seeing in the US. Thanks for watching.